So uh, feel free like ask question uh, like uh, during the, the presentation. Uh, I would like to have it more interactive. So uh, yeah, so my name is Asad Lasani. I'm a CEO and co-founder of Blue City Technology. So it's a spin-off uh, company uh, from McGill University. So I was working uh, for uh, my PhD on uh, transportation and uh, different type of uh, traffic monitoring solution. And uh, generally, uh, we wanted to help the cities to improve the safety and mobility in road networks. So uh, I start with the presentation and then uh, I have some like uh, LiDAR data, like showing how it works. And then I jump to our uh, data platform. So uh, Blue Sea Technology has uh, developed a LiDAR based traffic monitoring solution, which provides real time, uh, reliable and multimodal traffic data and analytics. So our data platform plus the sensor helps the cities to optimize their commute time and improve the, uh, the mobility, improve the safety in road networks, especially for vulnerable uh, road users, including pedestrian and cyclists, and helps them to reduce uh, the emission. So the outline of this presentation, I start uh, to give you a, like an overview about existing technology used for collecting traffic data and then uh, I jump into our technology and then uh, I'll give you a, sh uh, a quick like demo of how our solution works and uh, our platform. And also, and then uh, I'll give you an update about where we are as a company, as a startup company uh, and uh, about like our stage. So <clears throat> there are different type of technologies used in, in these days for collecting real time traffic data. Uh, for traffic light uh, optimization purposes, for traffic planning purposes, and also for uh, safety analysis in our road networks. So like the challenge with existing technologies is that like, first of all, if you look at the radar based solution, uh, so they are limited to a specific road user or mainly just the cars and it just provides data for uh, the number of cars or flow back of the stop line. But the challenge with this technology is that we usually need one sensor per each approach to cover like all the intersection and just getting data about the cars in most of the cases, which makes this technology is very, very expensive to implement in larger scale. Like in average, it's about like 30K per intersection to put uh, a radar based solution to cover the whole intersection. On the other side, we have Technology is based on the machine vision and camera. One of the main advantage of those technologies over uh, radar-based solutions is that those technology works for all type of road users, but there are two main challenges. Camera-based solutions is always like, uh, has like limited performance in terms of uh, in, in low visibility, they are affected by environment, uh, rain, snow, and that's something that is, it's going to be very challenging. You, re, you need a reliable, real-time live data uh, for, for traffic light optimization and coordination purposes. In most of the cases, the, the camera-based solution that many cities they are using for uh, planning uh, and safety analysis purposes, they don't work in real time. So they usually need a long process. The city planners, they need to install the camera. They need to click with those stream, record it, and then put it uh, in a company's website, and then they process it and return uh, the traffic data, and then the city planners can start processing it. So that's why, like, not only like the technologies in the market, uh, like, have limited performance and in, uh, in terms of reliability and performance. But also, like usually, data analysis part for the city is performed manually, heavily time-consuming, and often with the delays that makes most of the projects inefficient. So that's why, like our approach was to develop a technology that works in different weather and lighting condition, but also develop a data platform uh, that can anal provide. Uh, very detailed analytics and predictions on the traffic data. So not just only providing the data, but also analytics and predictions on the data. 
So success of any traffic management system depends on the reliability of the traffic data. For many years, when we were talking about coordination of the traffic signal or traffic uh, uh, management, we just mainly focused on cars and we were just thinking how we can move the cars faster, better, more efficient. But now because of the like many governments initiatives in uh, making the, the, our, our environment cleaner, like the city is more efficient. We are, uh, we are uh, suggesting like biking, walking as new modes of the transportation. But the challenge is that still many traffic management systems, they are just designed for cars. And so they are not like efficient in, enough in terms of protecting the uh, the safety of the uh, providing the safety of the pedestrian and cyclists, making the intersection safer. So that's why, like, uh, we need to have technologies that works for all road users. And usually, like, because of the lack of resources, the city planner uh, planning is slow, requires uh, lots of manual analysis, and uh, that's that's one of the main challenge. So that's why, like, at uh, Blue City Technology, uh, we we are offering. Uh, Sorry. So we are offering an automated way to collect and analyze traffic data, fully automated, real-time, reliable traffic data using LiDAR technology, and then using our platform, we provide analytics predictions for, uh, for efficient planning. And also, like, uh, the technology can be used for traffic light optimization, infrastructure planning, and safety improvement. It means that like different stakeholders in a city can benefit from the same technology, which helps them to reduce uh, the city's cost. So what we are providing at this stage is we are using a single LIDAR per intersection to create a real-time 3D image of the entire intersection. And then we are using deep learning algorithm to process those images, detect and classify the objects and extract their trajectory. This is like the basic of like the the the, the basic of how our, our platform works, uh, and then we use machine learning algorithm to generate detailed analytics and predictions for planning, for surrogate safety analysis, and generally for improving the safety of the uh, of the road users. I'd like to jump uh, into. Uh, like I would like to show you how LiDAR data generally works. So I have a, a quick uh, demo of uh, like one of the LiDARs that we install in a corner of the intersection in Montreal. It's, it's an intersection. It's very really, like dense in terms of the number of pedestrians because it's close to the uh, university in Montreal. And uh, so this is like a, like a live data of uh, one of the sensors and then if you just uh, like look at the, the the sensor from different angles, you see like with LiDAR data, uh, you can easily create the 3D shape of the objects. And that's the way that we are using our deep learning algorithm to de detect different type of road users. And one of the interesting point about LiDAR technology itself is, so we can, we can measure the distance to the objects from uh, from different angles and and as you can see like no matter if the sensor is close to the uh, if the object is close to the sensor or is far from the sensor because we are building the we are creating the 3d image of the uh, uh, of the each object we would be able to get the the same and precise uh, size of the object that's the way that it helps us to to be able to detect and classify the, the road users. And another interesting point is that like LiDAR technology is, is reliable in terms of lighting and weather condition. This site, it was like uh, about 9 p uh, p.m. and it was like absolutely dark environment. So that's, as you can see, still we can clearly get the, the, the uh, 3D shape of the objects, the location of the objects clearly. And uh, the other aspect of the LiDAR is that because there's no camera in this technology, so it's there, it, we, we can protect the privacy of the road users. And that's like one of the important aspects of, of uh, using LiDAR. So in terms of the LiDAR technology, LiDAR used laser beam to measure the distance from the, the sensor to the objects. And when you put millions of uh, those uh, uh, 
single points uh, distance measurements. So then you can create a 3D image of the intersection. This is the way that each frame shows like one, uh, basically one uh, like 3D image of the intersection. And as you can see like here, when we, when we zoom in and you can clearly see that the objects, the shape, and, uh, and that, that's the way that we are uh, doing our analysis using uh, 3D LiDAR. So one of the, another interesting point is that we just need one sensor to cover the whole intersection in most of the cases. That that's makes like the installation much easier and uh, it helps like to reduce the cost of the installation, maintenance, and even integration of the technology. So let's go. Uh, Seth, uh, what kind of LiDAR are you using? I know there, there's a lot of uh, research going on to reduce the cost of LiDAR. You know, you've got the Velodyne systems that is you know that that you know have the sort of rotating head and give you 360 degree but they cost you know twelve thousand dollars a piece um but there's a lot of these uh you know sort of silicon based technology starting to come out they're a lot cheaper um but they don't rotate or whatever um what kind of what kind of sensor are you using and do you see uh, a rapid development here that would make uh this solution a lot more cost effective yeah, so uh, it, it was, uh, it's, it's a good question. So when we started like exploring uh, LiDAR technology back to four years ago during my PhD, uh, so it was very expensive technology, but we believed because of the autonomous vehicle, the price is gonna uh, go down. So for most of our case studies right now, we are using Velodyne VLP16. So Velodyne is our main partner in providing uh, LiDAR technology, so it's a rotating LiDAR. Uh, so the resolution of 16 pixel is enough in most of the cases, except for counting pedestrian. So for this case study that I'm showing right now, it's a 64 pixel from Oster. So uh, still it's rotating one, but yeah, you are correct. There are like the price is going down. If I give you like an example, the VLP 16 from Velodyne, when we started was about 12K and then they reduced uh, in 2018, if I remember, to 8K. And now it's about uh, less than 3K. And uh, if you like follow the, the news about the LiDAR technology, the solid state version, it's gonna be less than $500. So that makes the solution much more uh, like a commercially feasible uh, product for, for to compare like in terms of like the performance to the camera based solution. So, uh, but yeah, so one of the challenges with uh, the solid state versions is like the, it's not rotating. It usually the, uh, the angle is 120 degrees. So if we want to really cover the whole intersection, uh, we need to have, uh, let's say two of them set up on a one uh, sensor to to cover the whole intersection. Gotcha. Yeah, but one of the main advantage of solid state lidars is that uh, in terms of like because the one that we are using is mechanical. Mechanical is always like there is a challenge in terms of the uh, life span of that like technology. But solid state, it's going to be more reliable in terms of the different temperature rain, snow, and everything. We didn't have any issue with our current sensor, like the, the Velodyne VLP. It's been like all uh, our pilot tests, it's been like about uh, three months installation, uh, especially for city of Montreal, we had minus 20 degree temperature. We had snow, rain, uh, like over the past two months. So uh, we didn't see any failure so far in our LiDAR. So we need to for sure do like more tests to, to see like how it works over, let's say five, six years. Excellent, thank you. Okay, no problem. So uh, let's go back to the presentation. So I would like to also share with you two of the case studies we've done so far. So uh, the, uh, the first case study that I want, I want to show you, it's an intersection. So we used one uh, VLP 16 to cover the whole intersection. And uh, so it's like one sensor installing a corner and, and right side you have the video uh, stream as well. So you see like the, how like the real uh, intersection is uh, with, with the, the camera. So we are not using camera for, uh, for our analysis, just uh, for visualization for sure. So as you can see, we are detecting and tracking 
different type of road users. The, the red, uh, the objects, they are basically the detection of the objects and the blue dots are like our, uh, the raw data. So we do the tracking. And one of the interesting points that we are getting from uh, our, our tracking algorithm is that we would be able to identify near misses. We, do, we would be able to uh, do safety analysis, as you can see, between object four and those two intersect, uh, pedestrian two and three. We see like the, we get the time to collision. Those are the metrics that we are using for, to do surrogate safety, safety. And when we put all this information over time, different days, different weeks, different seasons, and then you, you will have a clear idea about the safety index of the intersection. That's the platform side that we are, uh, we are, we are doing that like analysis. So we do safety analysis, we generate reports for the cities, and then they would be able to identify any uh, risk metrics, uh, any risk like uh, of the accident over time in uh, in different like the uh, in the different part of the networks. So then, in that case, if they see that there is a safety issue for that like a specific intersection or even a corner of the uh, specific intersection, then they would be able to uh, go there and do more inspection. Either they need to add exclusive green time or uh, or like change the geometry or add the exclusive lane, so on and so forth. These are like the planning part of the, um, the, the, the project. So basically the data analysis part provides data, uh, the, the, the data collection part provides data to do uh, intersection monitoring and use it for, uh, let's say, uh, traffic controlling pur purposes or like the same data will be used by our platform to do safety analysis and uh, planning predictions. The same technology can be used for other applications. So this is another application that we use it for highway monitoring. It's a project with Ministry of Transportation of Quebec. So it's basically one sensor. We simply put the sensor on an existing bridge. We don't need to do any road closure. We don't need to install any new pole or uh, new infrastructure, we just power the sensor. And one sensor, as you can see, is covering the, uh, like all the lanes, uh, like eight lane of the highway, which reduces the cost. This type of the installation from like over bridge helps the city, like, the, like generally the, for, for highway uh, data collection, helps to avoid like occlusion between uh, the cars. So when, let's say we are using a radar solution, uh, so we need to from the corner that makes like one of the one of the challenges with radar from the corner is that we're gonna have with there is a like heavy truck passing uh, let's say second lane of the the highway and as you can see again we are getting a clear idea about the shape of the object height uh, length width and then we can use it for uh, we'll use it for uh, classification of the car based on the length of the car. And then once we, uh, we, we are testing also a high resolution wide for this application. So we, get, we, we, we would be able to get much more precise uh, shape of the objects, which uh, can be used to have more class of the, uh, the heavy vehicles in terms of the pop bus, truck, uh, like way long trucks and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, yeah, so, I would like to talk a little bit about like the sensor, the installation as well. So using the sensor, as I, I mentioned, we just need one sensor to cover the whole intersection. This is like the picture of installation in Montreal. So as you can see, uh, there is a small box and there is a LiDAR uh, in top of the, so let me just activate my, so, at, so this is the, 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 the 3D LiDAR from Velodyne. The cable goes to this small box, which is connected to the power and can be, this small box is the processing unit. All the data coming from LiDAR will be processed in this small unit and just processed uh, traffic data will be sent to our cloud platform using LTE, Wi-Fi, or any network that the, uh, the cities can provide to us. And then this box can be attached to the same pole or it can be like into, inside the traffic cabinet. So then uh, the data can be also fit to the, 
the traffic controller to do uh, real-time uh, traffic light uh, controlling. So the sensor is really easy to install. So again, one sensor to cover the whole intersection. We don't need to have any specific infrastructure. So we don't need to close the road. It uh, usually takes less than one hour to uh, install the sensor. But once the city installs the sensor, we have a user interface can we, uh, which the, shows the live data of the LiDAR with our detection and everything. And then uh, the user can uh, just calibrate the sensor in terms of defining virtual loop. So we show the live uh, data stream locally using Wi-Fi or remotely over LTE. And then uh, so the user can uh, have customized definition of the virtual loops, which helps them to have different type of the virtual loops with different size, different uh, the uh, different widths, and also even different layers of the virtual loops. Let's say they want to have some virtual loops to detect uh, the cars, some virtual loops to detect just the trucks, some virtual loops for uh, detecting the cyclists, pedestrians, and so on and so forth. So it's a one solution to be able to get the data from uh, different road users. And, and let's say when we talk to virtual loop for pedestrians, so it could be like a a complementary part or it could be a good replacement for the push buttons because we would be able to see how many are how many pedestrians are stopped in corner of the intersection uh, waiting for the for the green time and one of the main challenges is that sometimes like people press the push button but they leave that they already pass the, the intersection uh, even over like uh, red time so in that case we would be able to see if there is an object or pedestrian stopped close to the corner of the intersection. If we don't see that, the, the traffic light can uh, ignore the push button and uh, change the, the, the timing of the, uh, the intersection. So in terms of like uh, the- so a quick question um, was um, uh, really about the, the, what you're doing on the post versus what you do um, in, the, in the control center. So it, it sounds like you're doing quite a lot of processing in the box that's connected to the LiDAR directly. Um, what is it that, were you showing us the, uh, the data that's, that's communicated or were you showing us the raw LiDAR data? At least in the original ones, it looked fairly much like we were getting all the point, all the point data. Um, but I assume you're not trying to communicate that in real time, that you're doing some sort of pre-processing to get to something more like this. Is that correct or, or yeah, how, uh, where, where are you doing that processing? Yeah, so for the processing box, look like that box. So we bring all the raw LiDAR data to that box and everything will be processed locally on that box. So what we like have at, at the, like as an output of that box is the traffic data. So including the detection, occupancy, count, flow, different type of the traffic data. Everything will be processed locally there. But on the safety uh, aspect part, because we need to do more like heavier processing on the trajectory data between different uh, road users, once we have the trajectory data, so let me go back to this point, yeah. So once we have all those green, uh, green points for different objects, so we send uh, like that, those trajectory data with their class of the objects and everything to our platform. So on the platform side, we aggregate all those data. We, we, we just uh, check like different safety metrics to, uh, to generate like uh, safety analysis. So yeah, so on the processing side is processing everything, generating all the traffic data and platform side is more like on predictions and analytics that we can get out of the, the traffic data. Thank you, very helpful. So uh, yeah, so in terms of like the performance, why we are using LiDAR and why like our solution is different than like a, a camera-based solution or radar-based solution is uh, we can collect traffic data in any weather and lighting condition without any issue. Our algorithm, deep learning algorithm is very like uh, uh, novel and it's very like uh, robust in terms of removing all the noises because of the snow or rain. And LiDAR technology itself is very reliable and in, in working in different weather and lighting condition. And also usually it's a single sensor, monitors cars, pedestrian and cyclists, and 
we are also adding other road users, including scooters, uh, to, to the class of the, the, the objects. And uh, so the data, everything will be processed in real time. So we don't need to do post-processing. Uh, so the, uh, the challenge is that sometimes like the, for the camera-based solution, they need to have a high bandwidth internet or network communication to bring the data to a platform uh, to do like uh, processing on the platform side. But there's two challenges. One is many cities are pushing the companies to avoid transferring uh, uh, camera uh, uh, feeds because of the simply because of the uh, the po possibility of uh, being hacked or like privacy issues. So they are pushing many companies to do everything in real time at the intersection, which is is a challenge, and we don't have this this problem. So again, lidar itself. Uh, we collect data without any privacy concern because simply we don't have any camera in our technology. But also, like we would be able to share this, uh, the real-time data. We are adding uh, connectivity with uh, V2X and 5G. We are uh, running right now a pilot project to share the real-time live data of uh, presence of the pedestrian on crosswalk with connected vehicles. So then, like when it's a low visibility during the night. Uh, so the, the, the upcoming connected vehicles, they would be able to see if there is a pedestrian and crosswalk. So if for, for some reason they can't see it because of the, the, the lighting condition or weather condition, uh, we would be able to help them to uh, improve the safety. So this is an ongoing project in Montreal. And uh, so it's a single sensor that serves uh, uh, multiple stakeholders in a city. So usually the way that it works, uh, Traffic management team, they have their own system. Usually they use uh, LIDAR, uh, radar. So there, then we have like planning team, they're using camera to collect uh, data, like they usually install temporarily. So this is gonna be like one solution that uh, different departments in the city, they can uh, benefit from the same technology. I would like to go back to the platform side to just quickly show you like, uh, this is a user account we, uh, we create for, for our demo. So let's say if we go to uh, our platform, which is vision.bluecitytechnology.com, it goes to the main page. Usually you will be asked to insert the uh, username and password. So it goes here. So we have a very simple user interface. You can define new uh, sensors, or if you want to have access to the data coming from the sensor, you can click on sensor summary and it shows you the location of the, the current sensors. So for this one is just the two of the sensors in Montreal, and then you can select the, the site and it goes to the, the location of the sensor. It shows you exactly where the sensor uh, has been installed in the corner of the intersection. So uh, just wait a moment, I think, uh, yeah, my, my internal speed might not be good, so. Let me close these. Uh... Okay. So as you can see for this slide, it's uh, it's intersection and uh, we put uh, one sensor, it's uh, installed in this corner of the intersection and uh, just waiting to the page to be up. So uh, yeah, so you can, you can see here like uh, different type of uh, traffic data and plots that uh, can be available for, for, for you to, to like, compare the data coming from the sensor. Right now for this platform, the data includes uh, the vehicle or count data uh, for different approaches, one, two, three, four, means like approach uh, vehicle, true vehicle, left turn, right turn uh, for different approaches. You have you can have different type of aggregation of the data, so it's like 15 minutes. Uh, you, user can simply select uh, select its own like uh, create its own uh, uh, plot, and then let's say you add a slot, and then you change. 
you you want to know like you can select how many which approaches you want to get the data which type of traffic data you want to get if it's vehicle cyclist or pedestrian and then uh, you would be able to select the time duration and so on and so forth and once you have the data for that plot you have this option to download the same data that you're seeing as a csv file with this option and plus we have an api that if anyone has its own um, platform and they want to grab the data from our database directly without using our user interface they would be able to uh, get the data from our platform and uh, uh, so I would like to also talk a little bit about why the cities needs to invest on uh, smart cities and um, like more smart uh, transportation uh, systems. So like congestion cost in the U.S. Uh, in 2017 was more than $300 billion. And studies showing that with the proper data and the intelligence transportation systems, so we can reduce this by uh, the congestion by 20 to 30 percent. Uh, which is uh, is a huge uh, amount of uh, money that can be saved by the cities, and also like about twenty nine percent of the the total GHG uh, is attributed to the transportation. And again, with a proper intelligence transportation system, we can save, uh, we can reduce by fifteen to uh, five to fifteen percent uh, in GHG, and more than uh, two hundred billion dollars the cost of the road fatality in, in the US and then again uh, studies showing that a proper uh, traffic monitoring solution especially like the vision zero uh, uh, initiative in running by many cities they can uh, reduce the, the, the total uh, injuries by 50 percent at the intersection so it, uh, it shows that like there is investment in terms of the technology and intelligence transportation system but for sure cities can benefit it in terms of improving the mobility, reducing the cost, and also like uh, in terms of reducing the GHG and uh, like uh, improving the safety as, as one of the aspects. So I would like to talk a little bit about like the current uh, pilots that we have. So we have a pilot in Montreal and with Ministry of Transportation of Quebec. So we have a pilot, uh, just uh, secure the pilot with uh, in California with uh, Advanced Mobility Group, we are finalizing the project that is gonna be launched by uh, mid-March. So it's gonna be in, in the Contra Costa County. So they have a, a test site for autonomous and connected vehicle. Uh, so called it, uh, they call it uh, Goldman Thomas Station. So we are finalizing that project. And also we secured another pilot that's gonna be launched by end of February in New York City with uh, with three different universities involved in that project in New York City. And also uh, we are running two other pilots, one in China and one in Sydney, Australia. Uh, especially for, specifically for the Sydney project, uh, they are coordinating our system with their uh, SCAT system, which is it's a, it's a coordinated traffic uh, management system used by uh, more than 25 countries around the world. So it's a good opportunity for us to bring the data to their traffic controlling system and uh, use it for, uh, for traffic light optimization in a, in a network level instead of just one intersection. And uh, so we have a team of right now, it's just seven people. So we just got like two other people added to our team. So we mainly have the background in transportation. So I've been in this industry for the past 10 years working in traffic management systems. And also uh, one of my co-founders, he's a professor in Tongji University in China. We were in the same lab uh, during our uh, PhD. So and also uh, we are working closely with our great mentors, uh, which uh, still we are at the startup phase, but there is a great potential. And one of the things that uh, we believe uh, there is a future for LiDAR technology is because of the autonomous vehicle, the, LID the new LiDARs, they are getting cheaper, uh, they are getting more reliable in terms of the range. So the new LIDARs that are coming to the market, the range is more than 250 meters. That means that we can get lots of traffic data that usually we can't get with current technologies in the market. For example, like back of queue, like uh, the number of cars that stop back of the, uh, the stop line. And uh, we are always open to get the comments from anyone 
And uh, so we are always open to any partnership and collaboration, especially with the universities, uh, because we are coming from universities. So uh, I would be happy to answer your questions uh, right now. Thanks, Asad. That was really, really very helpful and, and uh, a great discussion. Um, let me start with a question. Um, the, the discussion, I, I see how this uh, technology on its own could uh, help identify things like uh, near, near misses and a lot of the stuff that we've looked at um, in Portland relating to Vision Zero, you know, eliminating um, uh, pedestrian uh, deaths uh, through traffic accidents. Uh, this would be a very good tool for that. I wasn't quite sure. I assume there are other things that need to be brought to bear when you look at uh, a congestion management. Uh, did, are you are you using this in congestion management? And what what are the how does that process work? Uh, uh, is it is it just light control? Are you using this to manage congestion zones? Uh, how are you using it in reduction of congestion? Yeah, so uh, it depends on like uh, how advanced is like the traffic management in a city. So usually like in simplest case, the data can be, uh, can be transferred in real time to the traffic controller if they don't have any traffic management system. And usually the traffic controller, even the basic one, they have very simple controlling algorithm to see if there is, let's say, there is a major interest. Uh, interest there is a major uh, arterial with minor approaches, my, uh, like a, in one intersection. If the, the the system detects if there is no car in minor approaches, they can simply the controller can change the lighting, uh, light timing, and assign it to the major intersection. So this is something that the, the cities, usually a small cities, they don't have any advanced traffic management system. So they can simply benefit from that. So in terms of like the safety you mentioned, uh, other than doing like safety analysis, one of the, uh, the like immediate like uh, advantage that the cities can benefit from this technology is, so when our sensor is there, so they, they would be able to see if there's a, a pedestrian on crosswalk or not. Even though, like the the sometimes the the red like uh, the green time for the pedestrian is not enough to clearly like uh, uh, pass the intersection. So in that case, with our sensor, we can say to the controller that okay, there is a pedestrian on crosswalk. You need to extend the, the green time to make sure that it it passes. So it doesn't need to be necessarily like uh, like uh, safety analysis or surrogate safety. So you can immediately implement something that helps to improve the safety of the the network. But and the uh, and for more like bigger cities or more advanced cities in terms of the traffic management, they usually work with uh, big companies doing traffic management system like Itris, like uh, Caps Traffic, Siemens Mobility. They are like the big players. So what we usually do is we are partnering with those companies and then we provide the traffic data and and the solution for traffic monitoring. They provide their platform for. Uh, like uh, traffic management system, and then they uh, we we provide it as a whole like solution. So this is something that we are uh, discussing with with a couple of the big players. We had some discussion with uh, Econolite, uh, with uh, uh, iTrace before. We are working with Cap Traffic closely because uh, they need some data for the traffic management system that they can't get with any existing, even like the. Fisher camera from Grid the Smart company or like My Vision company, they can't get those data that we can provide with with our solution. So uh, yeah, so it's a two two things. One to just summarize is if the cities they don't have any traffic management system, so they can simply fit the data to the controller. The controller they already have some basics, uh, a bit, uh, traffic controlling system. But if ha they have more advanced system. Uh, so they would be able to uh, to use like uh, their own traffic management system and feed the data to their their algorithm. Thank you. Very helpful. Other questions? Asad, this is Scott Towsley with Splunk. Can you say something about how you see your capabilities and your services, if you will, as compared to what is known or available through? Uh, Uber, Lyft, Waze, other companies that have a degree of traffic flow insight? 
Yeah, so one of the one of the things that uh, we are talking with uh, some V2X partners is even like uh, autonomous vehicles in the future, they would be able to see what's going on in front of the sensor, like their car. But the challenge is that like in many intersection, uh, they can't see what's going on in other approaches when they are approaching to the intersection. So what we we are we are trying to do in our V2X project in Contra Costa in, in Montreal is we want to be able to share this data to the connected vehicles. For example, one of the, the application is with our algorithm, we have, we have the precise location of the car approaching to the intersection. It doesn't need to be necessarily a, a connected vehicle or, V2, uh, or autonomous vehicle. So with that like uh, exact location of the car, we get the speed, uh, acceleration, deceleration, uh, like all those metrics in our system, even if it's again, it's, a, it's an old car. So then with, with using those, uh, like that data, we would be able to predict if the car is, is gonna stop because of the, uh, the red light or it's gonna pass the, the red light. So this data can be shared w over V2X communication or 5G to the, to the autonomous vehicle like Lyft, Uber. So we potentially see autonomous vehicle, like connected vehicle uh, car manufacturers, as our like potential use case other than uh, tra traffic data. So we would be able to, in the future, share the data with those uh, uh, players in the market. And to be honest, like I don't see when we are gonna have autonomous vehicles, but we are gonna have connected vehicles sometime soon. So it's something that for sure makes sense to explore at this stage. So to basically our solution will bring connectivity to the intersection and share it with connected vehicles. Okay, thanks. Hey, good morning. Good morning. This is Alex uh, Huffenthal. I'm with the data supercluster, the co-chair with Scott and Ramundo Rodolfo. I've got a question about <clears throat> the data storage and how um, how you interface with other organizations. Are you planning, or do you currently have uh, specifications on how people can extend your uh, applications or how they can extend an application to add new features, or are you planning on doing features internally, exclusively, initially? So if you could talk a little bit about how innovation may be stimulated by your solution in a particular area in an open way. I'd be curious about that. And then the second question I have is about the um, the data itself and, and how it presents itself. Is this, um, is this pulled from the devices that are co-located with an intersection or is it stored in the cloud? Or, um, you know, can you talk a little bit about that, how it's, how it's stored, how the data flows, uh, who has access to it, how you get access to it, that kind of thing. Okay, so regarding your first question, uh, so again, we don't want to like work on any like different type of like application. So our focus right now is how we can generate data and analytics for traffic purposes. But if there is any like, uh, other use cases for our, our data that uh, we are generating. For example, one of the things is for like fleet management companies to, to use the data, real-time data, to do like the optimization, or like even in the future, if we have a larger implementation in the city, let's say 100 sensors with our solution, we would be able to share this data, let's say with Google or like Waze or uh, this type of like application. So to to make it easier, so we have uh, we have two main APIs to have access to all the data that we are generating with our sensor using our platform. So our API provides two type of uh, uh, accessibility. One is through our platform that we are storing all the data we are using uh, Amazon AWS right now to store and like aggregate and do like post-processing on the data. But uh, we would be, we, we have this option to grab the data from the sensor. So 
if uh, the latency is a challenge and we, we don't want to uh, have a like high latency from the communication from the sensor going to platform and then from our platform to the third party uh, platform. So uh, we would be able to get the data directly from, uh, from the sensor. To, to implement that, we already implemented MQTT protocol, which is it's a, a protocol to uh, easily grab data from the sensor. So we already implemented that solution. So uh, yeah, so again, uh, from the data flow uh, perspective, so the data goes from our sensor to process data, not like the raw data. So the traffic data goes from our sensor to platform, and then we store everything on the platform side. Uh, but again, uh, depends on if there's an application, we would be able to provide API to even gra grab the data from our, our sensor directly if the latency really matters. So uh, back to your first question, we are always open to find partners that they can benefit from our sensor data and uh, generate their own application and use it. So we are always uh, yeah, open to that. Yeah, you. about like, yeah, this this type of like partnerships. As I mentioned, uh, with Caps Traffic, what we are doing is they have their own traffic management system. So they they do like traffic light optimization uh, based on the demand in network level. What we are providing them it's uh, with an we are providing them an API. So when we they they want, they can grab the real time data directly from the sensor. For that, for their case study, is like um, rely, uh, latency is very important because they need to have uh, access to data in less than uh, 50 millisecond uh, latency. So uh, th that's why, like, we are not sending data to our platform and then from our platform to their platform. I've got one more question. Can you? Do you have? an idea you probably do have an idea can you talk a little bit about the uh the requirements on the network i mean this it sounds to me like that it might be variable this could be applicable to an iot kind of low bandwidth a high reliability network or it could be related to a high bandwidth network that's that's available how does that affect uh, what you can and can't do yeah so uh since we are not sending like huge amount of data it's just couple of numbers De depends on the like the application if you want to just send uh, uh, the flow usually like most of the cities they just need like uh, five minutes interval in uh, aggregation of the data so in that case every five minutes we're gonna uh, send like uh, uh, probably like uh, 20 30 different numbers to to the platform depends on the uh, the complexity of the intersection and also the, the type of data, if it's pedestrian, cyclist, vehicles, uh, plus per lane, plus like per approach. So in that case, it's a, uh, let's say 20, 30 numbers to send every five minutes. But if you want to get more uh, like uh, uh, disaggregated data, for example, for, for the project with the cap traffic, Say if they want to for each car they get to the uh, uh, car gets to the intersection. They want to know uh, the entrance, uh, the timestamp for uh, entering to the intersection and the timestamp they leave the intersection. So let's say if the flow of the intersection is let's say about uh, three thousand car per hour, so you're gonna get three thousand multiplied by uh, let's say three numbers, for example. So this is, it depends on the, the how aggregated data you want to get it. But usually for like, we, we prefer to have low bandwidth because we don't send like huge amount of data. We are not streaming any live data, live video or live uh, LIDAR data. And just give you an, like an estimate about like how big could be raw LIDAR data. With the ro uh, low resolution one that we are using, every hour of data is about uh, four gigabyte. And if we use the, uh, the, the high resolution one, every hour it's something about uh, 25 gigabyte of data. So it's, it's something that it's not possible to send over any like current uh, existing bandwidth, yeah. 
Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thanks, Hassan. This has been uh, really very helpful. And uh, I, over the next uh, couple of hours, I'll get it up on the um, up on the website so as others can see it. But uh, thanks so much for for walking us through it, and um, uh, I much appreciate it.